uh, welcome to Canada. We, uh, we're up here day opening day of a uh, archery mule deer hunt, and uh, you know how it goes. Got to cherish all the opening days you get in your life. So couldn't be more excited to start glassing. We're uh, on a knob. Me looking through this coolie that's basically a travel corridor from a pea field to a bedding area. We are up here with a really great friend of mine named Jeff Lander who owns a company called Primitive Outfitters. Jeff's been up here doing this for a number of years and I can't even remember how we met each other, but I think I've probably known him for, I bet, seven, eight years maybe. Excited for the week to come. The weather is going to turn for the worst or the best. I'm not quite sure what just yet, but I can tell you it's going to get exceptionally cold. And uh, there's a big storm front pushing in. It's going to start snowing on us, I think, later today. And then the temperatures are going to be in the single digits. So we're going to have some challenges from uh, a temperature standpoint, but it could make for some better deer hunting. Uh, the rut's just getting started. We're targeting, you know, older age class of uh, mule deer. And uh, we're going to be packing around the Hoyt, looking to put an arrow one in one. So hope you guys stick with us and uh, experience our first time up here chasing mule deer with a bow in Canada. First buck spotted. Oh, here comes number two. Another smaller buck. Two younger bucks coming out of the coulee up onto the flats here. And um, that's encouraging. The first couple, it's nice to kind of like quickly identify and see just for like scale and size reference of the country that you're glassing. So you can kind of zero in what we're looking for here. A couple of younger, younger bucks right here anyway. We found, uh, well, Matt found a, um, looked like a decent buck. We, we didn't get a good look at him, but there's a doe that was kind of standing out there for a long time that just seemed awkward and um, out of nowhere, this pretty decent framed buck showed up. The challenge is he was moving quickly and got into like the thick buck brush before we could get like a real good confirmation of what he is. Uh, so all, all we could see is like the back frame walking into the brush. Doesn't seem like he's come out of the brush. Haven't seen the doe or the buck. She followed him in there and they just completely disappeared. So uh, the rest of the crew is gonna come over here. Maybe we'll make a game plan for later this afternoon. See what we can come up with. Um, but that's encouraging. Good framed buck. Well, it's several hours after uh, we put that buck to bed, and Matt and I are gonna go try to sneak in on him. Uh, wind's picked up pretty significantly, so we are bundled up in our puffy gear, and the temperatures are dropping. Just started to snow a little bit. I think it's supposed to like dump on us pretty good overnight, so hard to say what that buck's gonna do this evening. He's with the doe. The right time of year for them to be acting ruddy. We're gonna go see if we can slide in and get a crack at him. Uh, Looks like a good frame buck, and uh, not gonna be too picky on this hunt. So, Let's go have some fun.
close at 22 yards. Matt and I were trying to figure out exactly where they were because you know how it always looks different when you get over here. And our, uh, our waypoint we dropped was like an estimate. And they're just up and they didn't really spook off. They didn't like the dope didn't know what we were because we're not Skyline, we're like off the, the edge here, but dang it, it's a pretty nice spot. <laughs> I mean, let's go walk up that way and just see. Top pin. After we saw him that first time, we freaking, I was like, they didn't seem spooked at all. So we jammed down the ridge and I just happened to peek over. I saw the doe. She kind of just wandered off. I looked to my left and the buck was right there. Top pin. It was a really fantastic opportunity that got squandered right there. Would have been a tough shot. The wind is blowing across. I had a pretty good clip with this uh, sleet snow that's coming down. <clears throat> Winter's officially here, guys. It's hard to believe. Uh, got dumped on last night. Oh yeah, I don't know, six inches maybe. Temperatures are gonna plummet even further, so uh, we're optimistic that maybe the honey's gonna be even better than uh, how it was yesterday, which for Matt and I was incredible. Super close opportunity, a ton of fun as that storm was blowing in, but uh, we're just getting things ready. We got a little late start because of the weather. Uh, 18 degrees out is what it's telling us. Got some snow and ice we're dealing with, but excited to get to the classic spot. Um, so, 
talked a little bit about how we kind of met. Jeff and I met many years ago at uh, some kind of an outdoor event. Just kind of stayed in touch, and then when my wife and I had to put our 13-year-old yellow lab down, Jeff reached out to me and said, hey man, I'm so sorry for your guys' loss. Uh, whenever the time's right, I need to introduce you to a friend of mine who happened to be Josh. So Josh Miller and his wife, Whitney, own Riverstone Kennels, and Jeff introduced us to Josh and Whitney, and we ended up becoming great friends with those guys. We've got our new yellow lab puppy, Cruz, who's a year and a half now. So kind of a cool story of uh, how we all know each other through passion of birds, gun dogs, and um, Matt Davis and Jeff are really close friends as well. Matt actually hunted up here with Jeff a number of years ago, and so he's got a little bit of knowledge on kind of how things work out here. So um, we got a great group of guys having a lot of fun at camp and looking forward to what this cold weather and these temperatures are going to bring. Maddie and I are going to be uh, layered up, which it wasn't bad yesterday, even though it was cold and windy. But um, hopefully these deer will start moving a little bit more than what we saw yesterday. Give us a chance that the terrain and topography is such that you can definitely get into their zone. Um, and that, that's exciting. So it's going to be a good week. I feel, I feel good about it. How'd you guys do? Yeah, one. There are about 900 of them. Thank you. deer tracks. A couple different spots here, a couple down there. Headed to where we're supposed to go check, so it's an encouraging sign. Maybe we'll uh, find ourselves a nice mature buck. We're gonna check all these little beds right here. But Jeff thinks up in this area would be the best. He knows of a few beds that are real deep and kind of heavily used. So we're just making our way over. Stay on contour right there. Hopefully turn up a buck. Got a little cold last night, apparently. I tried to, dude, I tried to pull it off somebody that something was frozen to it. Is it like a hand warmer? Oh, it was frozen to that Walmart bag. And then it ripped the Walmart bag right in half, so. Um, it was 30 cents. 33 cents, down the drain. Make you pay for bags these days at Walmart. Well, we're gonna fuel up. We are going to grab ourselves 
breakfast stand up, some coffee, and um, we're gonna go try to turn up this really sweet buck that Jeff, Matt, and Josh found. He's a dandy. Definitely what you come here for. And these days they've got hit with CWD pretty bad in this province the last few years. So the mule deer are not, it's just not as many of them as there once was yesteryear. Uh, but back in the day, those are the kind of quality of deer that you come up here for. So exciting to see one like that. He's got a lot going on. Got some inlines and uh, just a good frame, mature older deer. So we're gonna go glass the north side. Those boys are gonna glass the south side, see if we can find him, and then hopefully make a game plan for one of those guys to go jump in there. They found him, so they're buck, but I felt like smarter move for us to go work as a team to try to turn this thing up. And then who knows what else we'll see. So it should be a good morning. Five degrees, boys and girls. Put your mittens on. Pretty sure we turned up the big buck. It's not him. There's another one that's real nice. Just starting to get to where you can see through the spotter pretty decent. And sure looks a lot like him from that photo we saw last night, but good buck nonetheless. circles. Dude, he is, man. Well, we turned up the big buck. He's been confused. I think it's that time of the year, you know. He doesn't know what he's doing, really. You can see he's got three does with him. There's a coyote that just ran through them. We're just trying to keep eyes on him. It's, gosh, pushing 10 o'clock. No, it's 9.30 and he's still been on his feet all morning more or less we, we he was bedded this morning when we first saw him and he's just been kind of up milling around on this ridge for quite a while he's been by himself then he's been with those we're just trying to keep eyes on him for as long as possible we got the rest of the crew calling us because they want to know what's going on it's exciting but we're just being patient hopefully we can get him bedded and then try to figure out a good game plan for somebody to go slip in on him. It's pretty, pretty. So here's our setup though today because it's five degrees out. We've got the Razor 18 by 56 uh, UHDs that are on a, a window mount. And then we got the all in Bino adapter, which is freaking sick. I mean, it's such a great system for these cold conditions when we're just not wanting to move around, we just want to locate deer. We're going to try to meet up with the guys here pretty soon. The other thing we've been crushing today, Matt and I are very pretty much stoked on this, but uh, Onyx is active in Canada and um, we've been using the heck out of it. So these are saved some high res offline maps and you can see super high res. So these are power lines I'm marking. The reason we're marking power lines is when you get out there, it can get really confusing on where you are or where the deer is and where you thought you were comparatively because we're we're glassing from like i don't know 1600 yards away or so so i marked all the power lines here marked where the deer was mark where we last saw him and then eventually when it's time to go make a play knowing where some of these power lines are being able to count in and things like that can be super helpful they a cool thing is just throwing it in 3d mode kind of get a better idea the topography chances are he'll probably bed somewhere along this elevation line um or possibly over in here or maybe in this one so we're just going to try to watch him for as long as possible get embedded and see if there's a way to make a play at it but uh the guys glassed him up over here last night and i don't know 700 yards from where he was last night to where he was this morning. So not that far. 
All right, let's go back, brew a coffee, warm the feet, gather gear. I gotta throw some kennels out because we got a big deer to throw on the back. Yeah. Like where your head's at. That's right. Gosh, this pumps me up. I know. You should do an inverted no, snowing. Walk me, walk me through how you guys came up with the decision of who gets to go after this buck. I want to hear the real thing. Well, well Jeff, both of them. Jeff saw the deer. Jeff has a double-sided head point. Is that how it works? <laughs> I, first off, I would Those like, I, I'd like it on record. An American quarter is a Canadian coin. I, I'd like it on record that I said, Matt, you call it. Like, I was trying to be as giving as possible. And you called? Called tails. I, I can't it help that. double fate freaking head and quarter, dude. I knew it. Well, I saw, yeah, see, I saw Josh chewing a piece of gum, and I saw him sticking on the head side. Just a, you know, flip <laughs> the it's a veteran move. It's a veteran move. I was impressed. So was Jeff, Jeff spotted the deer yesterday. Any good outfitter has a double-headed quarter, yeah. so they can really solve these disputes easily. <laughs> you got to learn the game. Josh is going in. First mule deer stock in, uh, I don't know, guys. I'd like to hear your input, but first time ever. And he's going after this buck that we think is going to be in like the upper 170s, low 180s class. I'd like to hear nobody's opinion. Like this isn't this isn't like <laughs> I've never deer hunted before. It's the, it's my first mule deer stock. Different, big difference. Well, it's like yeah. Josh's first first day. Do you got to? I mean, Jeff, do you got to earn a little stripes? Like, should he go after that other 150 first? You know, just to like what he doesn't know, he doesn't know, and he'll he'll kill it. <laughs> and anger he doesn't know. Bias. You know what? Nothing but good I, I, banter, I can, guys. I cannot Nothing. wait until I come back with this deer. I hope he's can just I hope rake. He's I'm just gonna I throw it in all your face and just not mine. No, just, no, not I'm, yours. I'm, uh, I'm rooting for you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, I'm gonna throw it in your face, B Mac. You're the one ragging on me. I got you. Got to have B-Mac's a little a, good he's banter. He found it. He's the one who he he put up put away his hunt this morning for you, buddy. That's pretty cool. Team, hey, I was telling him, I was telling him Matt that. That was pretty Team awesome. Work. Teamwork's yeah. the dream work. That's right. I've never seen that from him. would have been tough to turn him up with one set. You guys might have been able to swing around and see him, but he might have been down in a hole. You never know. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And when he time. popped over where the coyote was, I mean, we would have had been right on him. I mean, to see him. He yeah. was only there for what? A minute? Yeah. Not if even. that? Yeah, if I was going to say at least 15 seconds. I saw his head come up and then turn around and go. Yep. Anyways, like, uh, we're going to go let some dogs out, grab a few things. The the deer are going to stay bedded at this point. They're probably going to like re-bed a few times, but we've got a pretty good idea where he's at. Can't see him anymore, which is honestly probably okay. And Josh is going to try to sneak in there and turn him up and put an arrow in a really awesome mule deer. So whack. that's our plan, guys. We're having fun. Temps are cold. Beautiful sunny day, though, here in old Canada. Five degrees all Fahrenheit. Fi- all five degrees of it. All, all five degrees. degrees. Well, it's kind of hard to sit on them for too long. That's right. You're going to need to make this really effective stock. Or you're, you're going to freeze. <laughs> yeah. He'll be fine. Uh, we came back to help try to just see what was going on with Josh and Matt on this big buck. So we got the big buck. We picked him up in a weird spot. He moved quite a ways from this morning, hopped the fence, and he's bedded right there. And then if you pan this way. There's the boys. Right there. So you can, so you can kind of tell um, they're close, but they're not really in play. He's got three other does with them. They kind of fed off more our direction. We're losing light pretty quick, and they're kind of just stuck with not a lot of cover. So we don't want to bump them out of here. They're being conservative, which is a smart play. And that buck's just in a super tough spot. This morning he bedded in the wide open. This evening, uh, after he hopped this fence, he bedded in the wide open and is facing those guys, unfortunately. So, well, man, mule deer are a tough critter to sneak in on. Matt made a really good attempt circling way around him. But as he started to get closer, there was three does that we lost track of. And uh, he just happened to bump the does. Does naturally go over by the buck. Buck picks up with him. They all take off. They boogie out. They did kind of run past Josh, but they were going, they were boogieing. So no opportunities for anybody. Um, Jeff's on the other side glass, and I'm hoping that maybe he picked up where they went. I don't suspect they'll bump too far. They didn't get winded, and the does weren't super spooked. Um, The buck didn't know what was going on, so he was probably a little more spooked, but optimistic we can turn it back up. Matthew and I 
uh, have been glassing this thing since this morning. A good amount of hours today. It was really fun to sit back and kind of watch it all unfold. Uh, you could see Josh, you could see Matt, you could see the deer, and we were able to film a lot of it. So, fun day out here in Canada with the crew. Lots of laughs shared, lots of banter, and we're gonna go regroup as a team and figure out what do we do tomorrow. Uh, it's like a double-edged sword for me because you wanna go out and have more opportunities to spot and stock ones that we could go after, but a deer of this caliber, I'd rather just be part of the team and like, I don't need to pull the trigger to go on the stock. We could sit back here and film it, find just as much joy and excitement out of that. Um, so we'll figure out what the plan is for tomorrow, but what a fun day. Morning, everybody. Uh, we're getting set up here. We are back to the uh, original glassing spot that we had that first opportunity and uh, basically a big giant coulee that kind of runs from a feeding area to a bedding area. So we're gonna hit this for a while and see what we can see. The other guys, Jeff, Josh, and Matt, are gonna go try to turn up the big fella again, but um, we figured today would be a good day to try to go find some more bucks that would qualify in the shooter category. Two degrees out right now. Got a good layer of like freezing frost. So everything's super white, a little bit of fog. We're gonna start picking apart this coolie. Got the window mount with the Razor 18s. And then if we can turn up anything, then we'll throw out the spotters and try to verify what it is. Rock. Yeah, let's go do this. you know new day same routine it's trying to find bucks has been a real challenge got more snow last night and a little bit into this morning man yesterday was a bit of a bust for being completely transparent i don't think uh we saw a buck collectively as a group i guess we did see one three point but we did some still hunting through like a coolie system josh and i kind of went through there saw one spike little guy and then we've just covered a ton of country. We got our rig, Matt and I, and then Jeff's rig with those three guys. It's so It's been so cold too, like just hiking around and being out in the conditions. You can do it for a little bit, but not all day. So we're, we're doing a lot of this. It's hot, funny that I just did that because there's a moose right in my binoculars right now. Which if you were to say, why would there be a moose out in this, like what kind of looks like wasteland there's like not much out here i don't know the answer but there's a moose right there so yeah we're gonna keep working we have today is friday we have till tomorrow gonna be tough gonna be tough and it was entrance frontal because he stood up looked right at me and <laughs> Matt said, he's like, all right, we're both, you draw, we'll both stand up. When he stands up, I'm range, I'll tell you the range. And so he goes, 20. And I put, you know, just boom, right? <clears throat> well, later on, I'm like, I'm like, man, that was great that you could range him. Because I, did, I didn't range him. I just said 20 because I knew he was under 20. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, but it, uh, it literally went all the way through him on a frontal. Oh, yeah. That doesn't surprise me, man. Yeah, Good crazy. freaking job. Hey, uh, nothing like the most, you know, like challenging mule deer hunt ever. Then suddenly it takes one and then you got a dead deer. That's it, man. That's it. That's why, like last night we were talking, it's like, you just got to stay positive, you know? Yeah, man. One, it takes one freaking moment to change the trajectory of an entire hunt. Yeah, this was it for sure. So, uh, 
So you got the big boy bedded? We do, yeah. Yep. So uh, I was driving over to come find you guys, and then Jeff said, yeah, let's not do that. Let's try to go in on the big guy right now. So I think we're okay. going to go try to make a play while you guys get him taken care of. But get a lot to... Lots of good photos and stuff, and man, I'm so fired right. up. Can't wait to see that buck. Good job. Oh, I can't God. wait to celebrate with you later. Hopefully, we'll have a double today, huh? I love it. All right, buddy. Well, go. Uh, good luck, okay. and uh, keep me posting. All right. Take care, boys. All right, bye. See ya. Bye. That's freaking awesome. Ah, oh, it makes me happy. I love to see my friends successful. We were actually trying to drive over to him and go help out and get some cool video and pictures and stuff. And Jeff was like, yeah, dude, let's try to go get that big deer killed. So we are gonna, we're gonna go do that. Matt Davis and Josh are taking care of his buck. Very first ever mule deer, and he did it with a bow, spot and stock, under 20 yards. Cool little story too that I love is, um, over the years we get asked a lot, like, what do you guys do with all like the gear that you get? So we get a lot, of, we're fortunate enough to work with great companies, and part of that is getting gear to use in our, in our hunts and stuff. And with Hoyt, we've been working with them since 2014. So every year we ju we'll get a new bow based on like the way they're launching their stuff. And uh, from the very beginning, I, I wanted to make a point to be able to gift all of my previous year's bows to good friends and family members of mine. And so that's what I've done. I've never kept one of them. Every single time we get a new bow, I give it away. And I just so happened I gave Josh the RX-7 blackout bow uh, here in May when we were on a fishing trip. I surprised him with that as a gift and he just killed his first mule deer with it Is this mule deer or a formidable opponent? Huh? They're a formidable Very opponent, nice. you know toughest critter to stock I think yeah, so in this open country uh, yeah. Seven and a half eight year old buck and he yeah. But you know what? He's killable. Yeah Might as well be you. Right. Okay. Well, wish me luck. Tear it up. I'll be up top. All right. Well, uh, hopefully see you about an hour and a half. I'll circle around and then uh, I'll be probably about 200 yards from you, 300 yards okay. from you, thereabouts. Yeah. And I'll just kind of hand signal. 105. You got a mark on your on it. I do, yeah. We got yeah. Maddie and I got a good idea where he is. It can be hard to pick him up once we get down there based on how he's bedded, but trust your gut. Trust my waypoint. I think we put it on a good spot and we'll be close. We just got to like Keep this west wind and hopefully not spook any other deer. Yes, that's, that's the worst part. <laughs> that's the worst part out here. These females. That's right. All right, Matthew, let's go do this, baby. buck about 0.86 miles in so I counted the power lines probably like three days ago I went and saved like a offline high image resolution in, um, of this particular tile where we're hunting and then I found every single power line from point A to B where we're glassing and I marked the one he's by so we were counting in six power lines and uh, that's been super helpful in just trying to pinpoint where he's going to be located so um, we're hoping the wind stays good, and we're hoping we don't bump any deer. And we can at least get an opportunity. That's all you can ask for is an opportunity. So um, We're not too far away from when we're going to get stealthy. We know that he's around 300 yards from that power line to where he's bedded. And we got about one, two more power lines to go.
Excuse me. Could tell or I thought I was trying to get a range and obviously all this brush was tough. I was actually trying to range this thing and his antler tips. His bed was right here. And I thought I was getting like 26. But now that I'm ranging like back, it said like I think it said 37. So if that's the case, I probably missed the low. Will you go stand where I was at? Yes, oh, dude. dude, yes, I did. We are trying to put the puzzle pieces together. I'm a little confused, to be honest with you. I was trying to get a good range. Obviously, it was bedded lower in a little depression. I kept getting around 26 is what I thought. When he stood up, um, there's a little bit of blood, but man, it ain't much. I found my arrow, but there's like virtually no penetration uh, and it's broken and stuff which makes me think I hit bone of some sort. But it's hard to tell. We tried to look at the footage in the camera. The lighting's tough, so not much blood. And I'm not sure. The deer was closer to like 32 versus 26, 31, 32. He ducked too, so I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of baffled, to be honest. Awesome buck. Biggest buck I've ever shot at with a rifle or a bow for sure and uh, made a great stock just don't know I don't know All right, little update. Um, we got back to my truck and Jeff and Matt and those guys were able to keep eyes on him. It's obviously real open country. Dipped into this coulee over here and after looking at the footage, still aren't 100% where we hit it, uh, but there was deflection on that brush. You could kind of hear it in the video. And then there's one clip where you can see like the arrows like sticking out. We maybe got like eight inches of total penetration. We can't figure out if, it, if it's like, it looks higher up in the body, like the upper third possibly. I mean, the, the buck ducked like crazy. So that leads me to believe maybe like that scapula bone. My arrow weights 506 grains. It's got like that Valkyrie system, 180 grain broadhead, probably 272, three feet a second. I mean, it's built to, to punch through bone even. Obviously it wasn't aiming there, but I'm thinking uh, that deflection maybe just kicked it off a touch. I was aiming for 26 is what the range I was getting. Turns out he was probably like 32, 33 maybe. And so we're starting to put the puzzle pieces together. He was bleeding decent, but since they picked him up, we just got off the blood trail, swung around here to where they saw him. And myself and now Matt Davis are gonna go try to get in on him tonight. Uh, the coyotes out here are terrible. They're everywhere and certainly don't want to risk uh, that outcome. You know, take a lot, have got a lot of respect for the game animals we chase and hunt. And the goal is always to make a one, one arrow kill, one shot kill. Sometimes it doesn't go that way, but we're going to do everything we can to try to get them killed tonight and um, get lucky, man. Need, need a little bit of luck.
it's almost dark. Cliff, who's one of Jeff's guys, spotted him. And he basically did a giant loop back to where, almost to where I shot him. And he linked back up with a few does. I don't think it's a fatal hit based on how far we've gone and what we're seeing. He's still bleeding. Every, as far as I know, the broadhead's still in there. Yeah, we haven't found it. But he covered a lot of country before we picked up track, right? Yeah. He was down here. Yeah, I mean, we've been out here. As soon as we linked up with these guys, we jumped out here. So it's super unfortunate. It just kills me. You dream about a scenario like that. I take a lot of pride in practicing and getting better and improving from years ago when I didn't recover a couple deer. Tinkering with both set us, trying to get the best situation, and then something like this happens, and it's just a freaking heartbreaker. I haven't had a chance to look at the footage in depth yet, but I definitely know there was a deflection, and it's, it had to have veered it off course because I was holding right on the crease. He ducked significantly at the shot, and 26 on a 33-yard shot should have just sunk right into the zone. I was holding like where I would normally hold to kill a deer or an elk, so I don't know. Just a bummer, we've been working our butt off. And uh, it's not the outcome any of us wanted, so. We're going for a twofer today. <laughs> so close, dude. Game of inches, man, that's bow hunting. Takes a little to cut something that needs to be cut. And Yeah, a couple inches here and there is a difference between tipping over in sight and going on a three mile track job and not turning them up. But tomorrow's the last day. Uh, I'm gonna give it everything I got to turn it back up. I think, you know, any Matt, there's another hunter in camp too. Anybody that could get an arrow on that thing, I'd be so, so thrilled. Just hate, hate to see it, hate to go through it. We got one more day, see if we can turn him up. He's been living in the same area for four days. Yeah. He hasn't ventured off. Matt put a good stock on him, bumped him a couple nights ago. Like he's just staying in this spot. I'm hopeful that that's the case. The coyote thing is a little worrisome, uh, but if the does are sticking around here, I'm hoping that He'll stick around I here. He's got enough kick in him. So. What a beautiful deer, man. Yep. What a bummer. Appreciate your help. We've scoured this area by vehicle, hoping we'd turn them up. Saw two mule deer, a couple whitetail. Everything's been like bedded down this morning. Really, really slow. We had two vehicles, Josh, Matt, Jeff, and one circling around, and Matt and I and the other one. And I probably went five miles an hour around this big chunk we're hunting. Glassed every angle we could, nothing. So we're gonna go back into where we left the track last night. Even though I know he was seen by Cliff, with his does a little further south of there. I figured just gonna go back to where his tracks are, follow that in, and then Matt Davis is gonna come in from a different area where he actually uh, made a play on him a few nights ago. Kind of a hi hidey hole, little bedding spot. So he's gonna come in from the top. Matt, Matty Ice and I are gonna go in from the bottom. Josh is gonna take my truck and go glass on the south end. See what we can see. I don't know what to expect. We're doing everything we can, and just hopefully we can turn him up.
quick update. We have been following his tracks that we left off yesterday. And then as we come over any kind of topography or depression, just glass, glass, glass. Um, started coming over this little hill. Three miles up, and I'm like, boom, there he is. He's bedded. He picked up two of the deer, small buck and a doe. They're also right there with him. And um, he stayed in his home, man. I, that's what my gut told me he was going to be here. Uh, he's bedded, so haven't had a good, good look at the injury. It's obviously not uh, a fatal one. He's still alive. But we're hoping there's an opportunity myself or Matt Davis can get in on him today. Uh, we're going to try to go sneak in a little closer. And just have to be patient. It's super cold, but might have to wait him out. See, see what uh, transpires. But, man, we spent hours and hours and hours today glassing from the truck. Nobody could see him, so I'm just thankful we found him. And now we're going to go get closer and see if we can possibly get a play out of him. We'll see. Lost light last night. Picked up his track this morning and walked it in about a mile. And we got embedded up on a side hill with a doe and a, another small buck. So I'm staying down here. B Max circling around. Can try and come in from on top of him. But it's not it's not super high probability, but it's our last day. And we already got an arrow in this deer, so we gotta send it. in. I'm trying to hand signal him into position. I think he's got visual on the buck now. Uh, the smaller buck is standing facing them. It's the only challenge right now. Smokes. Wild story, huh, buddy? Mm -hmm. 
doesn't get any wider than that. Big deer. When they face away from you, that's where yeah. you shoot them. Oh my God. Look at that. Uh, you saw, well, Big you deer. saw me move just a stud. with you a little bit. Absolute giant. I was going to give up, dude. Yeah, well, I'm My goodness. Yeah. Dude, I am Matt and I are talking the mystery yeah. of. Look where Brian, Brian shot that deer right there. Gotta tell you, this is one of the more wild hunts I've ever been on in my life, from the weather conditions to uh, the pursuit of this unbelievable buck. We, uh, the, def the definition of a team buck. We talked about it. These guys found him first, then Matt and I found him day two, and then we found him the third time. It's been all day out here, all freaking day. Uh, the wind and the cold has been uh, a challenge. And we have been just trying to get this buck finished off. He, his injury is such that uh, I don't know. We, we're gonna we're gonna show you more about the injury here because it's fascinating to figure out what actually happened for my shot. But all I know is Matt was finally able to get in on him, get a fatal hit on him, and finally put this completely crazy hunt to a conclusion on arguably one of the most unbelievable mule deer I've ever seen in person. You know, to echo what Brian said, just absolutely a team effort across the board to get this done. And uh, the stars aligned in the bottom of the ninth, you know, bases loaded, full count, and uh, was able to slip into 35 yards as he was bedded and uh, got a really good arrow in him. He made it about 80 yards uh, and laid down and was able to watch him expire. You know, Brian, Brian was right behind me, basically. Just, Shared a couple hugs and uh, man, just just an incredible, incredible animal, incredible memory. It's yeah, I don't I don't know if we'll, we'll ever top this one. It's uh, unforgettable. I'm so so grateful. So, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this film. I have some very exciting news for you. January 15th, we will be launching our brand new YouTube channel focused on all things Hush Life podcast where we will have a number of episodes such as this one, a hunt breakdown of this hunt in Alberta chasing mule deer. We will be able to dive into all the details that we could not fit into this hunt and lessons learned. And heck, maybe you'll learn a thing or two that you can take with you into the 2024 season. So if you do not want to miss out on this episode, make sure you subscribe to the new channel here and turn your notifications on so you'll be notified when this episode is released.